Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Chen Chen, and on this channel, we talk about creating photorealistic 3D assets. So for today's video, I have another more of a beginner style small video for you. In this video, I want to show you my whole texturing process of this little top thing inside a Substance Painter. This is another accessory piece that I created for the character that I never managed to finish. And I thought this could be an interesting case study for creating fabric texture inside a Substance Painter. So the first thing I did was trying to create a fabric texture itself before I go inside of Painter. And this is the pattern that I wanted to use, but I actually want different colors for uh, the details. And also I wanted to be able to generate fabric bump texture from uh, my tileable texture, which I probably won't be able to do from this um, texture that I found online. So my solution for this problem is uh, this very old school ways that I used to do to create fabric texture um, before we had Substance Designer. So after observing what kind of pattern is on this fabric, I realized that all the patterns are extremely repetitive. So I actually just used the solid brush and traced over a small section of the pattern and duplicated all over the place. This specific technique does not probably work for most of the patterns out there, but it does work in this case. I know a lot of people probably want to bring up that if I use Substance Designer, this could be much faster, and I totally agree with you. I just want to show you an alternative way of doing it before we even had Substance Designer. And for anyone that haven't learned Designer yet, you could possibly use this technique to create some of your fabrics. I kind of brought up this point in my jean texture video is that in terms of fabrics, one of the most important things with your tileable texture is that you are able to generate very good bump map from whatever tileable texture you're using. That is why I'm doing it this way. So by the end, I will have a proper bump map that actually follows the characteristics of the fabric texture. So this is what my texture looks like in the end. Um, I grouped different small patterns together in terms of uh, what kind of color I want it to be. And in the end, the thing I painted is mostly the mask for a different color and then assigned completely different colors to this new pattern that's different from the texture I found online. And to make this tolerable look a little bit more like fabric, actually, I'm going to overlay the actual fabric texture on top of everything. When I first assigned the color to the different patterns, it was just solid flat colors. And now I'm going to change the fabric texture that I just added to the color that I have assigned before. Having added that layer of actual fabric texture definitely makes this look a lot like fabric. And now I'm going to repeat the same process for every color I have on this fabric. Now I'm happy with my color map itself, I'm going to use the same setup to generate my bump map. The process is fairly simple since I've already created all the different patterns into different masks. I'm going to make the base te fabric texture around the medium gray and then I'm going to change every pattern on top to be slightly brighter so we will see a nice bump for the fabric in the end. The last texture I'm going to make here is my roughness map. Uh, for this fabric, the roughness doesn't really shift between pattern and no pattern, so it's going to be something fairly simple. First thing we're going to do in Designer is to bake the high resolution to the low. Um, all I have in the high resolution mostly is just some wrinkle on the fabrics, and also I wanted to get a nice AO between the pins and the fabric itself. Now I can start to bring the tileable I just created in Photoshop into the scene and uh, I'm gonna plug it into a fill layer and see how it looks. First thing I realized here that I definitely need to fix is how the pattern is wrapped around the object and this is definitely not going to work. 
And to fix this, I have to go back and fix my UV. And looking at my UV, you can tell what the problem is. I need my UV to be a little bit more straight at the bottom so the fabric can wrap around it more like a parallel straight line instead of something super curved. So I decided to detach the chest area as its own UV island and just work on the bottom part of the UV and straighten it a little bit more. Here, I don't want to force it to be completely straight because that can create distortion as well. I'm going to make it a little bit more straight by hand, but by the end, probably going to relax it a little bit as well. So here, I'm using Unfold just to relax it a little bit more towards the horizontal direction, and I think this should work. Actually, I was totally wrong about that. I need the entire front part of my clothing to be one UV island. So when I put a pattern on top, the pattern will run through it naturally as if it's a real piece of clothing. So this time, I'm going to use UV layout to fix the problem. Instead of UV layout, when I hover over an edge and select shift I, the edge will be selected and it will be in black as you can see on the screen. And then if I use Shift F to relax the entire UV island, it will try to force the edge that was selected to be straight. But sometimes you do get some distortion around the edges that was forced to be straight. So what I would do is import this version into Maya and just hand fix the little bit of a distortion I have around the corners. And this way we should get a pretty relaxed but at the same time a kind of straight UV. I hope you can see at this point that to make fabric texture, how you lay out UV is extremely important, especially when you have some sort of specific pattern you want to put on your fabric. Once I updated my geometry, as you can see how the pattern is laying on the object is looking much better. There is a tiny bit of offset on the side and I didn't mind that. I could have gone in there and shifted to match, but actually that's where a natural seam would exist on a piece of clothing. So a little bit of offset actually makes it a little bit more natural. Now I'm going to plug in the rest of my textures, my bump map, and my roughness just to see how everything looks. Actually, I'm quite happy with the bump. Um, it's not a very strong bump, which is exactly what I wanted. After that, I'm going to quickly throw a metal pin texture on the top and also a sort of a leather texture for the straps. But for my bump, mostly I see the very obvious pattern on my texture. So I actually want to go in there and enhance it a little bit. So I create a separate fill layer, which is just to add another fabric bump on top of everything. Once the basic fabric texture is working, the rest of the texturing is quite straightforward. The next thing I add is stitching around the seams. So I create a new fill layer with a basic fabric texture and uh, painted my stitch using just a brush and a stitch alpha. Right now, I think my fabric still looks a little too new and clean, so I'm going to add another fill layer using a darker fabric color, and I'm going to assign a mask to that color um, a little bit more like a random breakup mask. So I added some darker spots on the fabric to show some sort of wear or dirtiness. After that, I think we can still add a little bit more detail to make this fabric look a little bit more natural. I want to add some extra displacement map or height map. Um, I chose those uh, wrinkle height maps just to add a little bit more 
random um, wrinkle-like detail to the texture. I have two displacement map here. I tried out both and see which one works better. And I also rotate it to maybe align with the wrinkle I already have on the fabric. Once I'm happy with the direction, I lower the contrast so it's not looking too strong. That is everything I did for this little top thing that I made a while back. I know a lot of people are looking for fabric tutorials, so I hope this was a good case study and provide you with some good ideas to make your own fabric texture. That is everything I have for you today and I will see you in the next one.